Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking about this one, Astrid Lindgren's War Diaries. And if you're new to this place, I usually talk about books, but I usually do it in bulk. So this will be my first separate book review in such a long time, all because this one made me, sort of. Also, if I'm seeming a bit more sparkly than usual, it's because I joined a music festival last weekend and a friend threw glitter in my face. And apparently glitter is kind of difficult to wash off, so... I don't know how well it shows on camera, but if I seem sparkly, well, yay! And this video will probably contain spoilers, but I don't know if that matters when talking about a memoir-style book. You have to decide for yourself. But I will probably talk about the contents of this book that you don't want to know if you don't want to know. So why did I pick this one up? Well, it's a memoir-style book. I love memoirs and I think they're really fascinating in general. It's about World War II, it has a high Goodreads rating and it's Astrid Lindgren. So Astrid Lindgren is probably the biggest name within children's literature from Scandinavia at least, probably also Nordics. She's competing with the Moomins, but that's the only real competition I would say. And yeah, I just love her writing and she seems like a really kind person, so what's not to love? So basically that's why I wanted to pick this one up. Asti Lingen apparently wrote about 17 diaries during the Second World War, but they weren't published before 2015, so quite recently. There's probably a lot of things to say about that since it's all condensed into this. This is not a big read because it contains also a lot of pictures and also a lot of like notes that doesn't really belong to the story, sort of. But it sparks the debate of what has been left out and what has been put in it. I would think that Astrid Lindgren's family has had a lot to say in the matter of what to keep and what to throw away, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Since this book contains of diaries, it is about Astrid Lindgren's daily life and her experiences of the war, both from inside the home with her kids and her views on what's going on in the world in general. That's basically the whole thing. I think the main reason why I wanted to talk about this in a separate video is how much this book caught me off guard. So it's a thing where I'm Norwegian, I live in Norway, and Asi Lingen is Swedish, and the perspective she has on the war in the beginning just baffled me a bit. She doesn't really see much difference between the Soviet Union and Germany, and when the war in Finland goes on, the winter war between 39 and 40, it's sort of like she wants Hitler to just go and get rid of the Soviet Union. And as Norwegian, this is just a perspective that I don't know if it's forgotten or if it's just hidden or what I should call it. It's just that we were too busy fighting the Germans while Finland was sort of battling Soviet Union. Looking back at it, it's not like I don't know about these things. I just haven't quite grasped the, the, the full extent of it. So this was really interesting. And I, I thought if any of you have any literature on the Winter War in Finland, please recommend me in the comments because my head just started spinning and I wanted to know more about it. So if you have, please come below. I might say often when I read memoirs that I start thinking and I get new perspectives, but I don't think I've gotten a perspective change as I did reading this. It's just, I've grown up here and all the information is about Norway and the rest of the world fighting the Nazis and then just not realizing how close we are to the Soviet Union and now Russia. We still have a border to Russia, but we hadn't had the same problems as Finland has had. It's also something in the way she writes about it, just how much she wants the Soviet Union to be gone. I'm just looking back at it, thinking about what the history has told us. It seems a bit weird, but from her eyes, it makes sense. And also, as always, it's impossible to judge someone sitting in the middle of war, writing her own thoughts, and then looking back at it, it's just unfair. Thinking about how unfair it is to judge someone and their thoughts during such a stressful time, it was especially apparent when she talks about Norway towards the end, because then she starts justifying how it was a good thing that Sweden wasn't a part of the war, so they were neutral, and she talks about how 
positive it is that someone was neutral because without neutral states you can't really end the war. That's debatable. Also how a lot of refugees came to Sweden and of course that's true but still would have helped if they joined on the our side I guess. In general this book just made me reflect on a lot of things and it's more thought-provoking than other Second World War stuff I've read because they always have some of the same perspective, at least the ones I've read. And it's just something about this book that's really important because she was a regular person, she wasn't famous at this point, and she writes about everyday life and how her kids is the most important thing to her. And that was something that's just really beautiful and painful at the same time. It's sort of the war is raging, but her kid is sick and that's all that's standing in her head and that's what she writes and it makes a lot of sense. It's it's just sad that it is that way at the same time at, as it's natural and probably for the best thing. But maybe you understand what I mean. It's sort of like I wish that that was the situation for everyone, that everyone had an Asta Lingen in their life, sort of. But also being that regular person writing her thoughts, you get an insight into what people knew. So in recent years it has been a lot of discussion about what did the Norwegians know about the Jewish deportation during the Second World War and in this book she just writes a lot about it and writes about the Holocaust even though at that time when she writes it people have said that well we didn't know about it. In my mind it makes it more important that she was just a regular person because it gives you an insight into what they actually knew instead of some high official telling us what they knew and not. It's more trustworthy, I think. In Lingen's diaries, she writes about having a job that's top secret. It's later discovered that she did censorship, so people writing to and from or through Sweden, she went through them and censored the letters. And through this, she gets a lot of information and a lot of information is put in the book, even though... It's probably illegal to have put that information in the book, but it makes it more interesting. But it's still not the biggest part of this book, I would say. I would say that like the ordinary family life during this war is the big thing. It's fascinating how much food she talks about, because nowadays also you take more pictures from the holidays or Christmas or Easter. And that's also what she writes about in this one. So there's a lot of celebrations and a lot of food and this is probably giving me the incorrect image, I would assume, because there's so much food and I just don't think that that was the case all over the place. But as I said, a neutral country and it's difficult to say. I'm. It's like you have to read about 10 books and maybe then make up your mind. I've been talking a lot about things that made an impact on me when reading this, but there's still one thing that just beats it all, and that is, in the preface, it's told that through these war years, Astrid Lindgren told stories to her kids, and towards the end of the war, Pippi Longstocking came along. So, just in the back of my mind, knowing that through the war years, she started working on tales for her kids, and that would become like huge hits and be sold all over the world, making her famous. Like, it's all created from love. It's, I'm not meaning to become sentimental or anything. She just seems like a nice person. Probably a lot of things makes more sense when you read People Longstocking and you have the war in mind or thinking about it being written at that time. It's just very beautiful. It's sort of like love grows out of everywhere. Sorry. But that's what I felt when I read it. And it made me immensely happy. Thinking about this being possible. Or like war is going on and something beautiful is created. And as it's said in the novel, she probably wouldn't have believed it if she was told she was going to become this. And I believe that. She also talks about literature in this novel. It's not a big thing. But there's a lot of name-dropping authors and books, and I always like that, so it's a plus. So is this a read for you? I would say if you're interested in World War II, it's definitely, at least was for me, a new perspective. It's well-written, of course, she's an author. But if you're looking for a biography of Astilingen, this is really not it. It's letters and clippings and 
a lot of things are happening, but it's not about her, it's about what surrounds her. So that's about it. I really recommend this book. I thought it was really, really interesting. So check it out if you want to. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!